How do we diagnose insulin resistance, diabetes, and metabolic syndrome? Today, we're gonna to go into a deep dive of laboratory markers that will help determine if you have these conditions. So let's get right into it. Number one is fasting glucose. Fasting glucose is basically morning glucose when you have not eaten for 10 to 12 hours and you do a glucose test, okay? The marker should be between 65 and 99 in the morning. You can also do a postperennial glucose, which is after a meal. Let's say you had dinner, wait two hours, and your blood glucose should be under 140. Now, these two tests you can do at home. You can buy, purchase a glucometer or glucometer, and you check your first morning glucose and two hour postperennial glucose. And that'll help you determine to see if you have the first signs of insulin resistance. Next is hemoglobin A1C. This is a three month average, and you can do this uh, non-fasting. Basically, you can eat, it doesn't matter. So it's a three month average, and it should be between 4.8 and 5.6. Anything above 5.6 is considered insulin resistance. When you start to approach uh, 6.2, 6.5, then you're getting into that uh, diabetic range. There's another marker called fructosamine, and it's 190 to 285. You can do this non-fasting. Hemoglobin A1C is a three-month average, but fructosamine is more a one to three-week average of blood sugar. Glycomark, you can do that non-fasting, and this one looks more at uh, uh, sugar spikes. So if you want to make sure we're not having this wild fluctuation of sugar and insulin throughout the day, and glycomark can be a good test for that. You can also do glucose and insulins, insulin. You can do three samples. So you go to the lab, they give you a glucose solution or basically sugar. They'll do glucose and insulin in the fasted state, and then they'll do one at one hour and two hours. Okay? When you drink the glucose load one hour after, your insulin should be less than 164 and glucose should be below 199. At the two hour mark, it should be below 145 and glucose should be below 140. So oftentimes they do this type of test for uh, checking for gestational diabetes, but it's also a good test to see if you have insulin resistance. Um, so that you can do at the lab. When we do all these tests combined, we can kind of figure out if someone has prediabetes or diabetes. For metabolic markers, we can check lipid panels like cholesterol and triglyceride, et cetera. Because when you have high triglycerides in the fastest state, it's likely that you have insulin resistance or sugar dysregulation. CBC with differential, looking at red blood cells is also important because we're also looking at hemoglobin A1C. And if we have things like anemia, it could impact how uh, hemoglobin A1C will look like, right? Because basically, um, hemoglobin A1C is sugar attached to hemoglobin. And if you have anemia, it's going to impact that. The other one would be C-peptide. C-peptide is basically a short chain amino acid, and it's produced when you produce insulin. However, the half-life of C-peptide is longer than insulin, so it's a good indication of whether C-peptide um, is elevated or decreased. Now, when you have an elevation of C-peptide, basically your body is producing too much insulin and it can help diagnose type 2 diabetes or insulin resistance. If your C-peptide is low, your body is not producing enough insulin and it can help you diagnose type 1 diabetes, basically the autoimmune version where you're not producing insulin from your pancreas. So you can help, you can utilize C-peptide to differentiate whether someone has type one or insulin resistance or type two diabetes, okay? Inflammation can also impact sugar. So you should also check for CRP or C-reactive protein and ESR or erythrocyte sedimentation rate. So that gives us a good idea. When I flip the board, I'm gonna go in detail on how you're going to use these markers to determine if you have insulin resistance. 
Now, like I said, you can do these two tests at home. Fasting glucose should be done at 10 to 12 hours fasting. Two hour postperennial, you can do these two tests at home. Now, if you're above 99 at the 10 to 12 hour mark, let's say you're at 110, right? But your triglyceride in the fastest state is like 220, 250. That means you are leaning towards insulin resistance. In the fastest state, the triglyceride should be below 100, okay? Hemoglobin A1C, this is basically glycation of hemoglobin. So the per percentage of hemoglobin that is attached to sugar uh, is what they're checking here. And it's a three month average. Elevation of hemoglobin A1C is predictive of diabetic complications. Things like kidney disease, right? Or it can also increase advanced glycated end products. Advanced glycated end products need to be filtered through the kidneys so the kidneys continue to take a hit. When you have diabetes, you're going to end up with kidney disease. So you have to check also things like GFR or creatinine in order to determine if you have kidney dysfunction or C-statin C, okay? Like iron deficiency markers can also impact hemoglobin A1C, so iron deficiency because it impacts hemoglobin, kidney or liver disease, inflammation and oxidative stress all impact how hemoglobin A1C will look. That is why it is important to run other markers, not to just run just fasting glucose and hemoglobin A1C. You want to run other markers to determine if you have insulin resistance, prediabetes, diabetes. Fructosamine is a glycation of protein, basically albumin and IgG. So it's basically sugar attached to, do, to, do, uh, to these two proteins, and it's a one to three week average. So we use fructosamine, let's say, if you get a baseline, patient comes in, and your hemoglobin A1C is elevated, fasting glucose is elevated, but if you want to know if a patient is compliant to what you're asking them to do, you can do a fructosamine test in the beginning and do it one to three weeks after to see if that number is improving. You don't have to wait for three months. You can just do a fructosamine test at the one, two, or three week mark to determine if you have issues or improvement of blood sugar. Glycomark helps to look at what we call hyperglycemic spikes. So this up and down of blood sugar. So if let's say on average, you have a high blood sugar, low blood sugar that goes up and down throughout the day, but the average looks about normal. So you may have a normal hemoglobin A1C, yet you can have spikes throughout the day, which would cause insulin spikes, glucose spikes, and then drops. Okay, so glycomark is good for that. C-peptide, again, C-peptide is tied to insulin production, longer ha half-life. C-peptide is filtered through the kidneys also, so that's why it has a longer uh, half-life. So it's important to check, and it also helps you determine if someone has type 1 diabetes or type 2 diabetes. Last one is called HOMA calculator IR, okay, insulin resistance. This is fasting glucose multiplied by fasting insulin. So you do that first morning glucose and a fasting insulin together, and you divide it by these factors, one or the other, and it'll give you a number, right? So if it's less than one, your HOMA calculator IR, right, IR, is less than one, it's optimal. If it's above 1.9, you are developing insulin resistance. If it's above 2.7, you have significant insulin resistance. So the HOMA, HOMA IR is very important to determine um, insulin resistance early on. You use combinations of these tests to determine if someone has a problem because really you could cheat the fasting glucose. So you have patients sometimes, you tell them to do a, a fasting glucose and they know they have a problem. 
So they'll go 14 or 16 hours of fasting and do this test and it's below 100 and it looks normal. But if you did a hemoglobin A1C or fructosamine test or a HOMA IR, you're going to pick up those individuals who have insulin resistance. So that in a nutshell is all the tests that you would utilize to determine if you have insulin resistance or prediabetes or even metabolic syndrome. I have another video that looks at markers for autoimmune diabetes. So I'll link that video right above here. Okay, my name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.